G'day everyone. You know, I've never really been interested in owning a smartwatch. I mean, sure they have a lot of mod cons, but I hated the idea of having to charge it every couple of days, and they usually lack water resistance, and you definitely wouldn't use it as a beater. But as usual, I watch other YouTube reviews, I see new watches or smartwatches that seem to offer everything you want, and then you want to go and get it. So after sending my Christmas wish list and waiting, I was gifted my first ever smartwatch. So let's charge ahead and review the Garmin Instinct Solar 2, which I'll now refer to as the Garmin. So here's the specs list below, including case measurements, weight, water resistance, crystal, and price. The Garmin is sold through different vendors, so if you want the best price, I'd strongly urge you to shop around for a deal. And straight off the bat, the first thing I want to mention is how flippin' comfortable this thing is to wear. And there are several factors that contribute to this. Despite its larger case dimensions, the Garmin only weighs 54 grams of its supplied strap. You may see the Garmin from a mile away, but you'll barely feel it on your wrist. The case is made from a fiber reinforced polymer, or plastic, which only helps contribute to the Garmin's light weight, but the smooth contours and absence of any rough or sharp edges on this piece make it feel almost buttery smooth to the touch. Yet despite this daintiness, the case still feels sturdy and built for purpose, so I'm confident it can handle rough play. The case back has the branding and some specifications printed around the sides, but front and center is the sensor for checking your OBS along with the three-prong charging port. You'd think this might cause discomfort, but the sensor has very little clearance from the case back, so you won't feel it dig into your wrist. Likewise, the charging port has its recessed back into the case where you can't feel it. And as for the strap, the only word that springs to mind is WOW. I'm not sure what Garmin are using to make them, but I will say without hesitation it is the most comfortable silicon strap I have ever worn. Like the watch, the strap feels lightweight but very durable, yet it also has plenty of bend and flex to help it mold to your wrist. And with 25 adjustments, you shouldn't have any problem getting it to fit well. I said it at the beginning and I'll say it again, this watch is flippin' comfortable. And this is also handy if you plan to wear this thing while you're sleeping to monitor your body activity. As a Garmin is a smartwatch, it comes bristling with a huge number of features and options. To stop this from turning into an hour-long video, I'll only demonstrate a couple of them. I'll leave a link to the Garmin site below that lists them all, but if I'm being honest, I'll probably only use about 20% of those features, and unless you're a hardcore outdoor dweller, you won't need most of them either. But it's nice to know they're there if you ever need them. Looking at the dial now, and the first two things that jump at you are the octagonal-ish main display, along with a smaller circular display that looks like a cutout in the top right-hand corner. In this little display, by default, you have a day and date indicator. Moving towards the main display at the top, in its default display, you have the battery life indicator, and going further down the screen in order, you have the solar intensity line graph, the current time and humongous numbers, and the daily sunrise and sunset times. The execution of displays and their information is done well here, where the current time and even the day and date can be viewed with a swift glance. The other information is neatly tucked away and can still be checked, albeit with a longer squint. On a less interesting yet useful note, running around the dial edge is the Garmin logo at the top, along with solar at the bottom, and in between are the markings indicating the additional functions of the side buttons they represent. The best part is that they're still legible enough to view, but aren't as in your face about it, unlike some other watches. Normally I don't like negative displays on digital watches because it affects overall legibility, especially in low light settings. But if that's a concern for you, there are two workarounds. Either you increase the backlight brightness to your liking at a cost to battery life, or, my preferred option, invert the screen color. In fact, if you don't like the dial display, feel free to change it, as there's eight different display options on offer in those two color tones, which technically makes it 16. And if all else fails, just use the control button which keeps the backlight at full power for 8 seconds by default. And the light does a very impressive job at displaying all of the dial's details, with no need to adjust wrist angles to get a clearer view. Oh, and speaking of lights, tapping that control button twice turns the dial into a tiny torch. Neat. The buttons running around the side of a Garmin help activate or change its features. They sit a tiny, tiny bit further out from the case, but I'm talking a millimetre or two tops. The benefit of this is that they don't protrude much, so you won't knock them accidentally, but they have just enough clearance to make them simple to grip and press. From a comfort perspective, and from someone with sausage fingers, this is a very welcome touch. An etch into the case above the buttons is their descriptive function when they're held down, so points again for not being overbearing here. One thing I'll also highlight is the alarm. This is nothing new or revolutionary, but by default the Garmin will vibrate noticeably and emit a ringing sound that can be easily heard. 
it'll definitely wake you up if you wear it to bed. And to round out the tough image of this watch is its advertised 100 meters of water resistance, which will be plenty for most people out there. My mixed feelings are more to do with the watch dimensions. It might be lightweight, but at a bit over 47 millimeters in diameter, a bit under 50 millimeters in lug to lug measurements, and 14 and a half millimeters thickness, it has a large wrist presence. And it is a good thing the case is tough to boot, as I guarantee you will be knocking this on surfaces a bit, whether intentional or not. Although, that lug to lug size isn't really that big and does provide some semblance of compactness. But if you have a smaller wrist, this will probably be too overwhelming. And if that's the case, rest assured that Garmin offers this instinct in a 40mm version, and for those with King Kong wrists, a 50mm offering is out there too. Just keep in mind that these sizes advertise different levels of solar charging efficiency and battery life. And on the topic of solar charging, I think I got my hopes a little too high off the Garmin. I'm used to having solar watches like Citizens and Seiko's where even an hour in the sun would be enough juice to power it for a month. But as a Garmin needs to do more than just keep a few hands ticking, you'll need to charge it in direct sunlight for at least 3 hours a day to help it maintain its unlimited battery life claim. So if you wanted to charge this way, you'd better leave it outside somewhere safe for a while, and given I live in the melanoma state capital of the world, I wouldn't join it out there. But if you opt to recharge with the cable, rest assured that a recharge from empty to full will only take approximately 2-3 to three hours, and unless you're abusing the GPS feature, that should last you at least 3 weeks or potentially much longer. One other caveat to note is that if you're looking for a replacement strap, the Garmin is only compatible with Instinct 2 and Quick Fit 22 watch bands, so your choices are restricted. But given how great the supplied strap is, I wouldn't bother changing it. As for negatives, there are a couple, but they're pretty tame or boil down to stating the obvious. The dial and case colour and design is a very two-tone affair, and certainly won't be strutting down any fashion catwalks. You can opt for different strap and case colours if you want something brighter or military inspired, but this is strictly a casual or beta watch. No formal or office events for the Garmin. And one thing that holds me back from using the Garmin as a beta is its price. I mean, it certainly has the chops for it, and other owners have praised its indestructible nature, but I just feel a bit squeamish about being too hard on it. If we were up to a couple of hundred bucks, I wouldn't feel bad, but at this price point, I just don't want to risk it. And while this is definitely a strong feeling and durable watch, I can't help but feel my G-Shock feels just that bit sturdier. But if you've had proper roughhousing experience with the Garmin and a G-Shock, let me know your thoughts and how they stacked up. But speaking of G-Shock, if you think using their functions is hard enough, wait till you use the Garmin. With 5 buttons at your disposal, you will have to rely on your memory to recall which button to hold down to access your desired option. In its defense, if you only use a handful of features, it isn't too difficult, but if you plan on making the most of the features, there will be a bit of trial and error with those button pushes. The power glass included helps to provide the Garmin with solar power from the sunlight, but bear in mind that it still won't have the same scratch resistance compared to a sapphire crystal. So if you intend to get down and dirty with the Garmin, I would encourage you to look at an aftermarket screen protector. One thing I was really hoping to try out with the Garmin was its ability to make payments with its tap and go feature. It seems though that this option isn't available for all banks, as I got this message while trying to set it up. This might be more of a limitation on my bank send and not Garmin's, but I was a little disappointed. I suspect if you're a member of a large banking institute, this won't be a problem, but if this is a feature you're hoping to use, just keep in mind it might not work if you bank with a smaller organisation. And as a final nitpick, if you plan to use the analog time display, bear in mind that the circular display will overlap the hands, so visibility will be affected between the 12 and 3 cardinal points. And at the end of the day, I'm aware that the Garmin won't be for everybody. Traditionalists will still opt for their automatics, and the monochrome display and lack of particular features might turn others towards more vibrant choices. Yet before I got the Garmin, I knew it was going to be a good watch, but after receiving and wearing it, it has truly blown me away. The smartwatch feature list is extensive, but beyond that it offers excellent legibility, a ton of options besides time-telling, sturdy construction, and it is flippin' comfortable. There's a reason these garments are becoming more common on people's wrists, and I understand why now. And in a nutshell, yes, I would absolutely recommend this Garmin with zero hesitation. If you currently own or have owned a Garmin smartwatch, I'd be interested to hear thoughts about it. But that's it for now, and thanks for watching, eh?